you thought about what I asked you, cousin? Yes, cousin. And the answer is no. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I only need five dollars. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Five dollars is a lot of money, Patty. It's Mom's birthday Saturday and I haven't got a dime. Do you know how the family is about us buying birthday presents with our own money? Why did you spend the money on that sweater? I never could resist bulky knits. Happy. Happy. Sorry. Good morning, Aunt Natalie. Uncle Martin. Ross. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Kathy. Patty? Hi, group. Listen to your horoscope, Patty. It says you're wicked, stubborn, and hate animals and children. It does <laughs> not. Let me see that. Where did you get this? I traded it for two comic books. You got taken. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to what it says about you, Papa. You're a Virgo. I am? <laughs> You're incompatible with Sagittarius, Gemini, and Pisces. Mom, you were born... I'm a Pisces. <laughs> now she tells us. And all these years, we thought we were happily married. According to the stars, we were miserable and didn't even know it. Well, I'm gonna get going. I have an editorial meeting this morning. Today's the 16th. It says here, Virgos mustn't drive today, not before 5 o'clock. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm afraid the meeting won't wait that long. And even us Virgos have to make a living. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, dear. Bye, Dad. Listen to this. Because of the conjunction of Uranus and Venus in the early hours of the day, care should be taken to avoid automobile accidents. That's a lot of silly superstition. <laughs> Stop making a fuss over me. I, I mean, it's just a little bump. Ooh. <laughs> that idiot pulled out from the curb without even looking. And, 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 and he dented the whole side. Oh, can I see it? The side of my car. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps you shouldn't go to the office today, Martin. Uh, of course I'm going to the office today. Papa, it says here that... I don't want to hear it. It really seemed to work. It warned you. Now, don't start that again. It's a, it's a lot of superstitious nonsense. That's just what I was saying, but be extra careful today, will you, Martin? Uh. Wouldn't it be wild if this really worked? Don't you think that if the people who wrote these books knew everything that was going to happen, they wouldn't have to write these books? Excuse me. Hey, I'm taking a history test today. Would that thing tell me whether I'd pass or not? How do I know? I don't do this for a living. I just... Got an idea how to get Mom's birthday present. You're not really serious about this, are you, Patty? Of course I am. Everybody's interested in astrology. There's a fortune in fortune-telling. But you're not a fortune-teller. I am, with the help of this book. And who's going to pay you for a reading? I'll show you, cousin. Here's my first customer. Susan? When do we go to her birthday party? In November. Right, November 3rd. She's a... She's a scorpion. 
Hmm. Boy, is she in trouble. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hi, Kathy. Uh, are things better between you and Alan? Has he been talking to you? That rat. And they say girls can't keep a secret. He hasn't talked to me. I haven't seen him in a week. And then who told you? How are you feeling? How'd you know I had a sore throat? <laughs> the mercury is very strongly shot this month. You have to watch your health. By the way, why don't you wear your new dress tomorrow? You're gonna meet a dream bug. I am? Well, how do you know? Sorry, I have to go now. Hey, wait a minute. If you want a reading, I'm available every day, 4 to 6, 25 cents. Bye. <laughs> hey, what's with her? I'm not sure, but I think she's planning to replace Nostradamus. <laughs> Boy, the Gemini's in trouble. What are you doing? Playing polo. <laughs> Where'd you get all these books and charts? From the library. Do you know? I memorized the whole zodiac chart. I need some advice. From your sister or from the stars? From the stars. That'll cost you 25 cents. <laughs> Boy, you fortune tellers are murdered. Okay. What's the problem? Well, I'm going out for Little League Baseball. There are only two positions left open, pitcher and catcher. I was going out for pitcher, but Scotty Sheldon's going out for that, and he's pretty tough competition. So you're asking the stars if you should try for pitcher or catcher. All right. You're Taurus. Taurus? The book. Is that good or bad? Here we are. Taurus. You are sophisticated, a good administrator, and have inflexibility of purpose. Gee, that sounds like I'd make a great picture. You are a faithful husband, but there is violence in you. All I asked was whether I should pitch or catch. When do you have to make your decision? Friday. Friday. That's the 19th. Taurus, the 19th. You are standing at the crossroads. That's me, all right. <laughs> but don't be swayed by deceptive influences. Strike out with all your might. Strike out. Sounds like you're gonna be a pitcher. <laughs> Gee, I don't know how to thank you, Patty. If you're a satisfied customer, send your friends around. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Are you busy? Hi, Sue. What are you doing here? Let's sit down. Can you really read fortunes? So far, I saved one man's life and another man's career. <laughs> Tell me your problem. Well, don't be nervous. Stars and I are your friends. <laughs> well, Alan and I have been going together for six months, see? And last week, I found out while I was at my aunt's house, he was out someplace else doing something else, and I don't know what it was. Anybody home? In here, Martin. Are you feeling better, darling? If you're referring to that little bump on the head this morning, it was nothing. Hello? Who? I don't know. Just a minute. Is Richard here? He's upstairs with Patty. Yeah, just a minute. I'll... Oh, hello, Richard. This call is for you. Don't mention it. <laughs> you know, those kids are never off of that phone. I tried to call here for two hours this afternoon. I told Fran about your accident this morning, and she said that a fortune teller told her not to take a train, and the next day, there was a terrible train accident. Natalie, coincidences happen a dozen times a minute. I know. Still, was odd. <laughs> Boy, you sure are lucky to have a daughter like Patty. With her advising you, nothing can go wrong. Well. Gotta go. Uh, Richard, just a minute. Did Patty read your horoscope? Did she? She's incredible. She told me an aunt of mine from the north would be coming to visit me to give me some money. And you really believe it? Well, I... Richard. 
Does it seem even remotely logical to you that dead pieces of matter floating around in space millions of light years away from the Earth could possibly have any effect on your daily activities? Well, I... Use your common sense, boy. Now, listen. If what Patty told you was true, that would mean that all the thousands of people who were born at the same time as you would now be rushing home because a rich aunt from the North was coming down to bring them some money. Well... Now, doesn't that seem ridiculous? <laughs> Certainly sounds ridiculous. Well, gotta run. Mom just called to say that my rich aunt just got in from Canada, and she wants to see me right away. Bye. <laughs> You know, Patty is just amazing. This is my third reading. She told me I was going to meet this dream book, and I did. Well, now I stopped seeing Alan. I was going to be a nurse, but not anymore. My stars say I'm going to be a model. <laughs> you can go in now. Did she tell you anything? She just changed my whole life. <laughs> What'd she say? Well, you know how everyone laughs at me because I'm so clumsy and I'm always dropping things. Yeah. Patty says I'm going to be a brain surgeon. What's going on here? Oh, we're waiting for Patty. <laughs> you mean you're all lined up here to see the soothsayer of Brooklyn Heights? She's in her salon. Her... Scorpios face a restless week under the influence of Neptune. The only place in the world where things are good for Scorpios is Australia. If you can't go there, the next best thing is to stay in your room. I will, I will. <clears throat> I have a patient. Forgive me for interrupting. I'd like to speak to you if the stars don't mind. Would you excuse me, please, Phyllis? Sure. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Patty, are you taking money for this? Why not? I'm getting paid for a service. Well, I'll tell you why not. In the first place, there happens to be a law against fortune telling. I'm not telling fortunes. I'm reading charts. The term fortune-telling includes reading charts, reading palms, phrenology. What's that? Phrenology is the art of telling fortunes by feeling the bumps on people's heads. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Look, Papa, I studied all these books and charts. I know what influences people's lives. But, Patty, there is nothing to this stuff. You're always telling me you want me to think for myself. Are you telling me now that because you don't believe in astrology, I can't believe in it? Well, I didn't say exactly that. I mean, I, I want you to find out things for yourself. Then I can go on giving readings? Well, all right. If these kids are silly enough to listen to you, I suppose it serves them right. But you are not to charge them anymore. Oh, but... And that's final. You've just converted me from a profitable thriving business to a non-profit charitable organization. Couldn't have phrased that better myself. <laughs> Say hello to the stars for me. Don't catch cold. <laughs> Done it again. First, I predicted Papo's accident. Then Susan's new boyfriend, Richard's aunt. I'm incredible. I <laughs> see. And it has nothing to do with the stars. Well, I must have something. These kids aren't paying me their hard-earned money for nothing. Not anymore, they're not. Your father put a stop to it. No, he didn't. He said... All he said was I couldn't charge any money. I'm not going to. From now on, my readings are free. But if anybody wants to make a contribution, I'm not going to fight it. I need your help. No. All I need is three more dollars to get Mom's birthday present. If you help me get it, I'll give up astrology. Is that a promise? I wouldn't lie to you. Saturn's in conjunction with Mars. You look great, Kath. I feel ridiculous. 
Why does it have to be two of you? Because the money will come in twice as fast. I have it all worked out. With two of us operating, we'll be able to close up shop by tonight. turned him down because you told me to go with Stanley. Stanley? That dreamy new boy I met. Pisces. Oh, the fish. <laughs> What's your problem? Stanley hasn't asked me to the Saturday night dance yet. Hey, I'm not going to get stuck without a date, am I? At least I could always count on Alan. <clears throat> Alan is a very nice boy. Why don't you go to the dance with him Saturday? Oh, you told me the stars were against it. He's a Leo. Oh. Uh, maybe I better check it again. Here. According to your chart, the letter A is very lucky for you this week. And Alan is a very nice boy. Oh, then it's all right if I accept the date with him? I would. I would if I were in your shoes. In your stars. Oh, hey, thanks, Patty. I've been going with Alan for six months and... Well, I like him very much. I'm glad we're not ill-fated or anything. Well, now, I know you don't charge anything. But here's my voluntary contribution given of my own free will. Bye-bye. Come back anytime. And remember, you'll start to lose the sun moon opposition next week, and then you can swing out. Oh, you're in here. Oh, hi, Suzo. Sit down. Listen, I forgot to ask you. What do I tell Stanley? What do you tell Stanley about what? <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, do I just tell him I'm going to the dance with Alan? You can't go to the dance with Alan. He's a Leo. <laughs> but you just told me to go to the dance with Alan. Oh, why would I tell you a thing like that? Because his name begins with A. What does that got to do with it? <laughs> name begins with A. That's right. Sometimes that can make a difference. You better let me check it again. Here we go with Leo. Leo, Leo. Here. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. A is good for Saturday. Oh, but S is better. You better go with Stanley. <laughs> is that definite? Absolutely. It's written in the stars. But Stanley hasn't asked me yet. Don't worry, he will. Pisces moves very slowly, but wow. <laughs> Enjoy the dance, Saturday. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> The suckers have all gone. There's someone downstairs to see you, old great one. I think I'll take an astral break. Boy, I'm tired. <laughs> but it's sure a good feeling to know you've helped people solve their problems. <laughs> I'm looking for Miss Patty Lane. Boy, the word sure spreads. Build a better mousetrap and everyone comes running. My name is Roberts, Detective Second Grade. <laughs> Detective Second Grade, huh? I'm checking on a report that a fortune teller's operating in this neighborhood. I was told you might be able to help me. As far as I know, there's no real fortune teller in the neighborhood. <laughs> Can we quit now? I'm exhausted. Uh, why don't you run back upstairs and lie down? Because you and I are going to have a talk, cousin. Uh, that's a very interesting outfit you have on there. You mean these fortune-telling clothes? Oh, is that what they call It's a costume for our school play. School play? What's, uh, what's the name of this school play? Uh, we're doing, uh, Fortune Teller by Victor Herbert. Is that so? Oh, that's a favorite of mine. There's a... A gypsy love song in it. Now, how does it go, uh, uh... Uh, she knows. She's playing the lead. I'm playing the... Yes, now, don't be modest. Why don't you sing the song for Detective Robert, second grade, who's here because someone says there's an illegal fortune teller in the neighborhood. Slumber, my little gypsy sweetheart, dream of the fields and the grove. Come you Well, 
Well, that's very nice. Very nice. Well, I, uh, I guess I made a mistake. That's all right. Come back any time. Huh? Hey, you know that prediction you made? Uh, what address did you want? Patty, I want... Oh, you wanted Patty. That's Patty. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I have an awful lot of homework to do. <laughs> I have sworn that was Patty. Uh, <clears throat> Patty? I think you and I had better have a little chat. Do you mind if I uh, take a look at your room? It's an awful mess. I know, I know. It's, you've been rehearsing all afternoon. All right. Wrong. We just... Well, it's, uh, it's a nice room. Thank you. Now, you look like nice girls. I don't want you to get into any trouble. No, sir. If there was ever any fortune telling going on around here, I can promise you it'll never happen again. I believe you. Thanks. Isn't there a police fund for widows and orphans? Yes. We'd like to make a contribution. Hey, did you want to say something? <gasps> hey, what a good idea. Well, thank you, but uh, why don't you take it down to the station? I'll be glad to accept it. Fine, we'll bring it down this afternoon. Good, good. Oh, uh, <clears throat> would you like some advice? Yes, sir. Get rid of all that junk under the bed, huh? <laughs> You didn't mind about the money. I thought it was the least we could do. I guess so. Boy, that was a close call. Never again. <sighs> Kathy, listen to my horoscope. Today is a good day for you to start looking for a different career. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is your mother's birthday, you know. Yeah, I know. Kathy told me why you were holding those astrology readings. Boy, she has a big mouth. So, uh, I was just thinking if you'd like an advance on your allowance, why, uh, the stores are still open. Do you mean that? Yeah. Thanks, Papa. Ah, couldn't help myself. It was written in the stars. <laughs> Don't speak to me. Well, I do. You and your stars got me off the Little League team. You told me the stars wanted me to be a pitcher. Well, Scotty Sheldon got it. Boy, this time you really fixed me. Me? What'd I do? I went out and bought a $200 hi-fi set. Congratulations. Congratulations. I was going to pay for it with the money I got from my rich aunt. Didn't she give it to you yet? She came down from Canada to borrow money from us. The store won't take the set back, and I've got to work after school all winter to pay it off. That's terrible, Richard. Susan? Oh, there you are. Well, I just came to tell you never to talk to me again. What's the matter? Well, why don't you ask the stars? Not in touch anymore. <laughs> well, you told me to turn Alan down. Well, I did. Well, then I found out Stanley's going with another girl. And now I don't have a date for the Saturday night dance. Yes, you do. Why don't you go with me? She can't go with you. Why not? Because Aquarius and Gemini don't mix. Oh, they don't, huh? Well, just watch. <laughs> Here 
Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins And you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike You can lose your mind When cousins word for break out. Third letter is you. Erupt. That's what I'd like to do. You'd like to erupt? Break out. Seems like it's been miserable out forever. Why don't you read a book? I've read a book. I've read one, you've read them all. What are you making? A shift. I could have been a great dress designer, but I flunked sewing. I could never thread a needle. Why do they use nervous needles? <laughs> What's that for? I'm going to trace the design of the cap and see how it will look on the front. And tell you how it'll look. Ghastly. <laughs> Why don't we go see a movie? Because I want to finish this. What are you going to call it? Catnip? <laughs> Patty. Why don't you go call Richard? I know when I'm not wanted. See you later, cuz. <laughs> needed money for a new dress, I'd have longed you some. Don't you like this dress? It's catastrophic. Well, this is what the in-group is wearing. Doesn't it make you feel naked wearing something no one else has on? No. Hi, Patty. Hi, Mary. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Miss. Is that a new dress? Yes. It's beautiful. Where'd you buy it? I need it. Oh, you're putting me on. No, she really did. Cuckoo, isn't it? Could you make me one like it? I'm afraid I sure she could for $9.95. It's a deal. <laughs> but I... Hi. Say, that's wild. Who sells them? Uh, my partner and I. $9.95. And what do you call it? Uh, Tatnip. <laughs> well, could you make me one in red and one in blue? One red, one blue. <laughs> What's going on? Look what I just ordered, and it's only $9.95. How soon could I have one? I don't... Monday. I got it in green. Our Nile model, 7A. My folks are taking me to Switzerland next week. Could you mail it over there? I'll send a memo to our shipping department. Go to the European market, too. Patsy, I only have ten fingers. I can't make dresses. Shh. Don't bother me with details. Hey, do you have it in yellow? Any color your little heart desires. That's our model, 6D. Girls, girls, now, let's go. I'd like to do one. Side by side. Who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet The ballet russe and Quake Suzanne. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. And that's just the first day, partner. It's also the last day, partner. No wonder you're nervous. A sensitive artist like you on the brink of greatness. Stick to me, and you'll become a dynasty. Stick to you, and I'll become a one-woman sweatshop. Do you know what you're doing? It took me three days to make this dress. That means it would take me 129 days to fill those orders that you promised for Monday. Will you calm down and let me explain? Explain what? You don't have any material, you don't have any sewing machines, and you don't have me. You're a creative genius, I'm a business genius. Together, we're gonna build an empire. Based on one little dress? 
Do you have any idea how many people build careers in just one little thing? Fulton invented one little steamboat. Whitney invented one little cotton gin. The right brothers. Patty, you don't know anything about the dress business. I can learn. Papa always says, when you need to know something, go to an expert. There are lots of good designers in this country. Hey, there's a beautiful dress. It's lovely. Gregory Madison. Who's he? One of the most famous designers in the world. That's our man. What are you talking about? You'll see. Operator, I'd like to send a telegram. Tom. This just came from the Worldwide Dress Company, Mr. Madison. Worldwide? Never heard of them. Must be a new firm. Well, their president and vice president will be in town this afternoon at 4 o'clock. They'd like a meeting with you to discuss a matter of mutual financial interest. Mm, sounds impressive, huh? You better see the bar is stocked and get plenty of good cigars. Yes, Mr. Madison. <laughs> Are they, are they here? Yes, sir, but... Well, don't keep them waiting. Show them in. Yes, sir. Talk to you later. <clears throat> I'm Patty Lane, president of the Worldwide Dress Company. This is my vice president, Kathy Lane. Uh, you're the... Uh, uh, and you're the... I'm, <clears throat> I'm Greg Madison. That'll be all, Miss Hamlin. Oh. Uh, you got our telegram? You, uh, oh, oh, the uh, telegram, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, please, please, uh, sit down. Oh, well, uh, would you care for a drink? <laughs> a glass of milk? No, thank you. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, it's what we can do for you, Mr. Madison. We're here to give you a hand. Well, uh, it's very kind of you. You see, we've just gone into business, and we're going to give you a chance to get in on the ground floor. The a ground floor of what? Our dynasty, if everything goes all right. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hope that it will. We're willing to give you a percentage of our business. Well, that's very generous of you. Uh, but tell me, what have I done to deserve this? It's what you're going to do, Mr. Madison. You see, my vice president here designed a dress and wore it to school, and now it's selling like there's no tomorrow. Well, then what's your problem? Well, we don't have any material to make the dresses to fill our orders, and we don't know where to get it. Oh, I see. We were hoping you could send us to your wholesalers. Uh, uh, may I see your designs? Certainly. It's all right for you to look at it. We've already applied for a patent. Oh, well, that was wise of you. This is it. Well, now, that really is charming. Really charming. You're a very talented young lady. Aren't we? Do you really like it? <laughs> yes, yes. It does need something. Uh, do you mind? Not at all. <laughs> Now then, let me see what I can do. Let me show you the famous Madison touch. Little Madison magic here. Whisk broom. Shears. It's amazing what you can do with little things that really have no... There. Take whisk and a little tape and attach thusly. Ah. That ought to do it. Now, this will give you a, a rough idea of what I mean. That's much better. I love it. We should give you a royalty on... <gasps> <laughs> Very nice, Mr. Madison. Exactly what we had in mind. Now then, let's see what we will need. Then you're really going to help us? I'd love to. But look, don't worry about the percentage. Let me do it for the, for the excitement of helping to found a new dynasty. That's even better. <laughs> One thing, were you planning on using this material? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. Well, may I suggest something a little bit heavier? Let's say a, a denim. Why didn't I think of that? You would have. <laughs> well, for that, I'll send you to the uh, RC Manufacturing Company. And let's see. Uh, we'll need a few of these rhinestones. For that, the glitter. 
novelty. Hi, dear. Hello, darling. Ross. Hi, Dad. You look tired. How was your day, a brute? Did you see any juicy killings or gang holdups? I'm the managing editor of a newspaper, not one of the untouchables. <laughs> there was a sign out there in the hall, WWDC. Patty put it up. It means... Uh, don't tell me, let me guess. Uh, women's white dresses cleaned. Uh, why worry desperate centipedes? <laughs> Worldwide Dress Company. There's an executive meeting going on in your study. Behind those closed doors are the president, vice president, and board of directors. In my study? Patty's the president. She's going into business. She's going to be a typhoon. No, dear. A typhoon is a big wind. That's close enough. <laughs> I think it'll be very good for her, darling. It'll give her a sense of responsibility. Now, you and Craig make the deal to handle the business end of it. We'll sell the dresses for $10. Labor and material come to six dollars. That means we make four dollars on every dress. For every hundred dresses we sell, we make four hundred dollars. And for every thousand dresses we sell, we'll make four thousand dollars. And every ten thousand dresses we sell, we'll make forty thousand dollars. We're rich! Now, all the department stores have teenage shops. They'll be glad to do business with us. Patty, it takes money to go into business. No, it doesn't. My new silent partner gave me a letter to his wholesalers. We can get everything we need on credit. What's the first step? You mean, what's the first step? What kind of a question is that? It's obvious, we... <laughs> Wait. What's our first step? Well, you can't start manufacturing until you know how many orders you have to fill. The first thing you do is get your orders, buy the material, hire labor, and make the amount of dresses you sold. See? I told you it was obvious. <laughs> I know who our first customer is going to be. Stan Brook Department Store. Kathy, how long will it take you to make ten more of those dresses? Me? <laughs> you said we were going to set up a factory. Well, that comes later. I need ten of those dresses right away. <laughs> How's it going? All right. See, I wish I had your talent. <laughs> no, see you later. <laughs> well, they're racing right along, aren't they? <laughs> yes, aren't they? I'll stick with it. D -d 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 Good old American <laughs> Laura. I'd give anything if I could do that. Come on, see you after the movie. It's very original. Our sales department is swamped with orders, but we'd like to help you out as much as we can. I don't know if we could commit ourselves to an order from a firm that's had no manufacturing experience. Call Gregory Madison. Gregory Madison? He's sort of our silent partner. <laughs> we already have 70 orders from our school alone. <laughs> And they're very inexpensive. We can supply them to you for only $9.95. All right, all right. Call off your clack, I'm convinced. If you can guarantee delivery, I'll give you an order for one. One? Uh, uh, frankly, Miss Mason, with a product uh, as outstanding as ours, we had hoped for a little larger order. We don't like to plunge on any item till we've had a chance to test it. How soon could we expect delivery? Would six o'clock be all right? Well, we're not in that much of a hurry. Let's make the delivery date Friday, and I'll increase the order to two on a consignment basis. Uh, but that would be fine, Miss Mason. Thank you. All right, that's Friday the 17th on consignment. Too gross. There you are. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did she say too gross? That's what she said. Do you know how many dresses that is? It's, it's, how many dresses is it? 288 dresses. And you promised them by Friday. That's only three days away. We've got to cancel that order. Oh, we can't do that. We'll be out of business before we begin. What are we going to do? Use good old American know-how. RC Manufacturing Company? This is Patty Lane, president of the Worldwide Dress Company. Yes. I want to order 700 yards of blue Mr. Novelty Company? I'd like to order 1,000 rhinestone buttons. I want to rent 10 sewing machines. You'll have to deliver them this afternoon in about six colors. Right. There you are. Right, Craig. Where are you from? I live here. <laughs> oh, it's you, Mr. Lane. I, I wasn't expecting you. I like to drop in from time to time. Right. Hello, Mr. Lane. Craig. How's it going upstairs, Craig? There you are. Pretty busy afternoon. I can see that. Your trucks have got the whole block tied up. That's big business. <laughs> See you for a minute, Kathy. And uh, Madam President, if you don't mind. But Martin, I haven't had this much fun in years. There is something wrong with all this instant success. Why? Richard figured out that by the end of the year, we could make half a million dollars. Oh, Richard figured that out, huh? <laughs> you know how fast sweep the country, Uncle Martin. Why, they're like tidal waves. Well, it's a funny thing about tidal waves. They go out, too. Gregory said that if you're going to do something, do it big. Oh, Gregory said that. Look at this order. Well, this says on consignment. What's that? Patty, are you sure you're ready to be president of a company? Oh, don't be a big business pooper. <laughs> On consignment, young lady, means that if they don't sell the dresses, they can return them to you. Why shouldn't they sell them? All the girls from school buy there. Sure. We just ordered material for another 200 dresses. You're right. It is like a tidal wave. I'm beginning to wish I had an aqua lung. <laughs> I'll get it. If that's the shipment of boxes, send them up to the East Flat. East plan? That's Ross's room. Martin, I think you ought to do a story on this. Teenage tycoons terrified dress trade? <laughs> Natalie, it's not possible to start a business without experience, assets, or capital. James Watt started with a teapot and some hot water. I have a feeling that's what we're going to end up in. <laughs> this is Mr. Dobson. My aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Lane, and our president, Patty. How do you do? How do you do? I had planned on being here earlier, but there's a, a terrible traffic jam out there. Uh, that's big business. <laughs> business must be good. We're having a hard time filling our orders. Well, that's what we like to hear. We? Yes, I'm with the government. <laughs> Small Business Bureau Division. Now, you're president of the Worldwide Dress Company? Yes. You operate from these premises? Yes. They just got started. Do you have employees on the premises? Yes, there are 12 of them. Well, that's a, a good round number. You two went to business for yourselves, huh? That's right, they're all on their own. Well, not entirely on their own. Uh, we wouldn't want them to feel neglected. They have a partner. A partner? Uncle Sam. <laughs> Here's some W-4 forms for withholding taxes. Unemployment and disability forms for your employees. You'll have 48 hours in which to get a manufacturer's license. You'll need a safety inspector's seal for the premises and a waiver to rezone this house for manufacturing. <laughs> there hasn't been a residential manufacturer waiver in the last 50 years. Papa, can they do this to us? What are you gonna do? 
fight free enterprise. I'm going out to mail the dress to York now. How much is postage to Switzerland? And an export license. For one dress? Some of our other departments will be calling on you this afternoon. I have a feeling that you're going to be keeping us pretty busy. Well, good luck with your business. Small business pooper. <laughs> it was wonderful of your father to straighten out all that red tape for us. Sure was. It only took two lawyers, an accountant, and a business manager. The whole industry founded on our brain. It gives you a feeling of power, doesn't it? It gives me a feeling of panic. <laughs> Richard said you ordered enough material for 300 more dresses. That's right. We have to be ready for the deluge. Three orders should be coming in any minute. Come on. Hey, that's darling. I want one with a picture of Johnny on it. Where can I buy it? For me. I'm making them myself. I want one, too. How much are they? $8.95. Can I have two? Sure. I'd like one with Pete and one with Joe. Uh -huh. I want one in blue and one in yellow. Great. Girls, now listen, girls, you, you don't want to buy those jackets. They're impractical. Really what have you changed, boyfriends? <laughs> Well, you gotta hand it to these kids. Give the public what it wants. Hello, Richard. Keep pretty busy, huh? Yes, sir. Hey, where's the president and the board of directors? They're in the living room. Huh? Counting their money, I presume. Why, well, I was sure wrong about this group. Well, this is a grim-looking gathering. That just proves that money doesn't bring happiness. Welcome to Bankrupt Manor. I'm possibly the youngest failure in America. Bankrupt Manor? What are you talking about? We got drowned in the tidal wave. But, but I saw a lot of trucks out there. They were making deliveries. They were returning dresses. We've been deconsigned. What happened? Someone came up with a newer idea. Yeah, you know how fickle teenagers are. What about all that material you had stockpiled? We went to Mr. Madison about that. He was wonderful. He took it all off our hands. He couldn't do anything about the finished dresses. They're a little out of his line. Boy, I really washed out. I'm sorry. It's as much my fault as it is yours. Well, here are the figures. After we deduct material, labor, and insurance, and balance that against total expenditures, minus capital assets, we have $1.25 left. Oh, that's not too bad. At least you ended up on the profit side of the ledger. And on the debit side of the ledger, we're stuck with 25 dresses at a cost of $6 a piece. That's $150 we owe. And I was going to build an empire. I should be declared a disaster area. Honey, you tried. He had an idea, and you followed it through. I'm proud of you. But it didn't work. Patty, a lot of dreams in life don't work out the way we hope they will. But that doesn't mean we have to stop dreaming. Then you're not angry with me? No. Wait, you almost accomplished a very rare feat. For a while there, I actually thought you were going to start a business with no assets, no capital, and no experience. That could have set a very dangerous precedent. I love you, Papa. Listen now, may I make a suggestion? We'll take it. No, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> I was just thinking, suppose we uh, donate all these dresses to some worthy relief organization. Now, I'd be willing to bear half of the cost if the uh, rest of you will bear the other half. And you can pay me back at the rate of, say, uh, $2 a week. Do you mean that? That's wonderful, Uncle Martin. Good. Then it's all settled. May I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Let's go spend the assets on some ice cream soda. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Go to a movie. I can't this afternoon, Patty. I 
I'm busy. What are you making? A hat. Hey, I like that. <laughs> do you? I sure do. Do you know something? Yes. <laughs> we are going to a movie. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike at times. They even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. 